Hey guys, who is ready to make one more cuff? Today we get to stamp one that's a little bit more personalized than the last one that we did. Take a look. So for today's cuff, we're gonna be doing a hammered texture around the edge. And we're gonna use that ball pane hammer that you got at Harbor Freight. And that is another reason that we want that ball pane hammer. And then you can see we're also going to be adding some personalization to this one. So we're going to add whoever's initials to the end of the bracelet. So it'll be a perfect Mother's Day gift because you can add the initials of the children of the gift recipient. And let's also talk about the fact that I just did 2,500 subscribers. So I think the best way to celebrate that would be a giveaway. So stay tuned, watch the whole thing to find out how you could get a new Impress Art hammer. So here we are for our final bracelet for our beginner stackable cuff collection. And this one is going to be our second Mother's Day bracelet. Here we go. I've already taped my bench block and again I always do this so that the back of it doesn't get scratched up as I'm stamping which happens for me when I use a bare bench block. And I went ahead and purchased some thinner blanks for this one. I thought it would be fun to have some variety um, in length or width. So here's the difference between the two widths. And I am going to use my buffing block today. I should have had that out. Look how sorry that's starting to look, but you can use them forever, so. All right, so here's my electrical tape, my trusty. It's only trusty if you can find the end. There it is, okay. Now again for this one, I am only going to be stamping on the end. So again, I'm gonna do the right side. And I'm actually, this time, going to go ahead and tape the end over here just to give it some more stability. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I use all of my tapes for a reason. This one is going to give me a straight line when I stamp because I'll be able to bump the bottom of my letter against this tape. That was too far out. And it also stabilizes my blank. All right, here is another Thing I want to show you in this video. This is an ammo case. So you can get these at Cabela's. It's a sporting goods store. So I'm sure they have them at like other sporting goods stores. I don't know. Where do people go? So this is just a case that people keep their ammunition in when they go hunting or whatever and it just you know keeps it from spilling or whatever. So this guy is $3.50 and look at all of that beautiful organization. So lifesaver. Okay, so if you have that little case um, still that you got at Harbor Freight, you can totally switch to one of these just to keep things from getting jumbled up or damaged or whatever. So for this bracelet, we are going to be doing a mother's bracelet that will have the children's initials on it. For this one, I am going to go ahead and write out the plan for the bracelet because mom is easy, right? If you do it backwards, it's the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write this out really quickly with the initials that I want to use. I'm making this one as a gift. So let's do, uh, let's see, J. G and then again the hearts okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here whoops let me cover it up so I can't see it that will probably help a lot okay so I'm gonna leave this here so that I can see my little plan and not mess up my bracelet I'm gonna start with the hearts this time but I think for this one, I'm personally going to use a different stamp. I'm gonna use 
this poppy. Is it a pansy? That's a word. This is a pansy. This is a beducation pansy. Okay, so I'm going to do the pansy first instead of hearts. And you will have your shape, and you know what? You can buy new shapes any old time you want. So beducation has some of my favorites. Font fixation also has some really beautiful um, design stamps, and same with, um, yep, just lost the name of it. Okay, so there's that, and then let's go with my G. So these are my some of my Mirando um, stamps. These are totally outdated. He doesn't make these bla uh, black shanks anymore, but I love them. There's my G and my, let's see. Where's my T? Oh, there it is. The one problem with my Mirando, as you can see, it's kind of a two, four, six hexagon. And um, so they do spin around in this case, but that's okay. I can just turn them and they have a mark on the side that tells me what letter it is. So let's see. T. Another nice thing about these is they do have this neat tapered end. And so I don't have to get crazy about lining up my stamps because I can just see it. There's my K. So I'm just setting my stamp on my bracelet blank here and sliding it back until I feel the edge of the letter catch on the edge of the tape. And honestly, I'm still covering this about halfway. Oh, my kids are home. Hang on a second. Okay. So let's try this again. I'm going to go ahead and set my K here on my blank and just slide it backwards until I feel it hit the edge of the tape, making sure that this edge is parallel with the edge of my blank. Give it a whack. These are nice and sharp too. You'll notice that as you pay more for stamps, you are going to notice a big difference in the quality in how crisp of an impression they give, how well they hold the ink, all kinds of things. So here's my J. And I'm gonna do one more little flower here. I'm hitting this a few times because I just wanna make sure that I get all sides of the impression. It's a small stamp, so it's not too hard to get an impression, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting everything deep enough that it'll hold the ink. I have to be really careful though that as I'm tilting it around um, and hitting it repeatedly, I'm not moving it or I'm going to get a double impression and that doesn't look nice. Okay, so that part of the stamping is done. And now here, well, let's go ahead and fill this in really quickly. This person's favorite color is red. So I'm going to fill this with red. Just get that all colored in there. I'm going to leave it for a minute so that I can fill it in again. I just want to point out too, different people use different things to fill in the letters. So we're learning with Sharpie here, but normally I do use a Sharpie oil-based marker. And you can use things like enamel or nail polish or just all kinds of things. So, okay, so let's go ahead and buff this ink off here. It's gone a little bit pink, but I don't mind. I don't think she will either. I think she'll still be my friend. And that was a lot easier than the gratitude bracelet that I did just because there's not as much to take off and the letters aren't going to hold a ton of ink. They're more open letters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just wipe that down a little bit with a dry cloth. And then I'm going to, this one has some sharp edges on the back, so I'm just going to knock those down a little bit, that burr on the back, technical term. If you can't get it to um, a dullness or a smoothness that you want on this back side, 
you can switch to like the little emery board from the grocery store. These have a, uh, what's the word? What's the opposite of fine? <laughs> okay, whatever, coarse, that's the thing. Coarse grit um, and that'll knock it down faster. And then you can come back through with that buffing block to make it more satiny. I'm just turning it a little bit so that I'm not only getting one part of that edge there. It's crazy when this kind of stuff, the cleanup, takes more time than the stamping sometimes. There we go, that's a lot softer. There's nothing worse than scratching yourself on your jewelry. Perfect, okay. I don't have as much aluminum on me this time either, so that's really nice. I'm gonna move these things out of the way here. And before I go ahead and bend that, here's the little technique that I wanted to teach you. It's gonna be a little tough for me on this thinner bracelet, but I wanted to show you. So again, I'm going to be using the ball pane end of my stubby hammer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hammer that kind of texture like we did last time, but only at the very edges instead of all over the center of it. So what I do, um, if you like your fingers, you might want to find another way, but I set my finger down next to where I'm gonna be stamping, so right here, so that then as my hammer goes down, hopefully you can see this, there's no way it can hit the middle of, of the blank there's only room for it to hit the edge. So I'm just gonna be really careful and go lightly so that I don't, you know, lose a fingernail. I just did my nails. This is too thin for me to do that trick, so I'm just gonna have to be really careful. I'm kind of, right now, aiming for the bench block right next to it so that it kind of glances off the edge there. And I'm gonna just do this all the way around. So I'm gonna speed this up for you so that you don't have to watch this for 20 minutes. done. So let me show you. Oh wait, I want to do a little more right here. Okay, I feel better about that. So let's show you what this texture looks like. So it looks like, you can see it's got that kind of scratchy, denty texture, which I seriously am loving. But if I wanted it to be shiny so that it's more eye-catching and flashy maybe, instead of sanding it with that buffing block, I could use my rubbing alcohol to clean away the extra ink. Look at this crappy one that I made two videos ago. I'm just going to use this thing forever as an example of, you know, crap happens. Okay, so if I wanted to use my chasing hammer, this is made just for adding texture. It has two different size sort of rounded ball ends here. You can get this one at Hobby Lobby with your coupon or there are better quality ones out there, but if you're on a budget, this is a good option. So this one will give it a shinier um, finish. So it'll really catch the light and kind of glint. So let me show you what that would look like. I almost started to do this. Don't ever do that, do this, just so you know. I'm gonna use this end on part of it. That's gonna make a bigger indentation. I'm gonna go ahead and use this on the opposite side so that you can see the difference in the shiny and the dull. All right, are you ready? Here are the different textures. Let me see if I can get this so you can see. 
So one side right here is very glinty and shiny and this is more of sort of a satiny texture. So they both made the indentations but this is glinty and shiny and this is satiny. So let's talk about why we would see this difference in texture when we're hitting it with, I mean, it's a ball and hammer, right? So why is it gonna make that different texture? It's because whenever you put force against this, whatever texture is um, being pushed against it or hit against it, I don't know how to words. So anyway, whatever texture it's touching when that force strikes, that's the texture it's going to leave. So you can see this one has a satiny finish sort of where you can tell that the tip has been ground down in order to make that ball shape, okay? So when we hit with this, this ground down texture here is the mark that it's going to leave on the blank. And whereas this one has this polished finish. So when this strikes against the blank, it is going to leave a polished mark. Let's go ahead and bend our bracelet. So pliers, smiley face, smiling at me and then the stamping facing me. And we're going to start on the end and our little smiley face is just gonna go ahead and chomp on that bracelet till we get to about the middle. And then I take this and I don't turn it, I flip it so that everything is facing the same way. The stamping is still facing me, the smile is still facing me. Okay, I can see that I need to do some more on the other side. I don't need to flip it anymore. So I'm just gonna work back and forth until it looks like I want. Now while this texturing has work hardened it a little bit, it's nowhere near as much as the last cuff that we did because we've only hammered the edges. We've only textured those edges instead of the entire surface. Okay, so that fits me. I just put it on upside down. Pretend I didn't. Ta-da! So, there we go. Here's our little stamping that I can read. If I want to tighten this, I can just wrap my hands around it and squeeze like this. If I want to open it up and make it not so tight, I can just put my hands in here and stretch it this way. So, I wouldn't adjust it and tell your customers or your gift recipients or whatever not to adjust it too many times because once metal has work hardened, it becomes brittle. And if you're opening it and closing it all the time, then um, it's just gonna cause weak places in here and it will snap. So just make sure that you get it only tight enough that it just, just slips over the thin part of your wrist a little bit tightly um, as you know the side of your wrist there as you slide it on and then it should sit right there so let's try it with our other cuffs here is our mom bracelet from last time that fits me a little better than this one I would tighten this but it's not for me and here is our grateful cuff and here is my other cuff that I had already made so here's our stack I feel like a gypsy but you can see, you could change these out. You could just do two. You could wear them with your leather bracelets or cuffs. So they're really versatile and so fun and easy to make. So I hope that that has been helpful. And let me know which was your favorite style. And that's it. We've got our beautiful textured bracelet here. I love the satiny finish that you get with the ball peen end of the hammer here and our little personalization. So let's talk about that giveaway. There were four things that I put into the video that you need to do in order to enter the giveaway. So if you missed those, just go back and take a look again. 
And then once you guys have completed the giveaway, I will randomly pick a winner and announce it in my next video. And who the heck even knows when that video is gonna be? But the winner gets a 16 ounce Impress Art camera. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Have a great day.